Main news of the day are the modifications to the Grand National, the, the race itself and some procedures. We went through the starting procedures with Jamie Steer, who is the Director of Race Day Operations and Regulations of the British Horse Racing Authority. Um, we're now going to be joined by John Baker, who runs Aintree Racecourse as part of his role in the North West Regional Director for the Jockey Club's racecourses. Um, and we can focus on some of these changes. Fence design, Beaches Brook, landing areas, field size, further investment in irrigation and and riderless horses. John, thanks for joining us. Good afternoon, Lydia. How are you? Very good, thank you. How are you? Yeah, very well. Very well indeed. Thank you very much. Um, maybe we can sort of just we'll split this interview into two parts. And first of all, focus on what you have done and then what, what you haven't done, uh, which the um, RSPCA have highlighted. They've welcomed many of the changes. Maybe if we can go back to that caption, the second caption, and sort of go through um, in some detail uh, what has happened in, in, in each case. If we start with um, fence design, and Aintree and the British Horse Racing Authority are going to embark on a three-year research and development process Program, looking at alternative fence designs for the Grand National course. Can you give us some more information? Yes, certainly. Um, I mean, this came about from the full review in 2011, uh, and we've, we've, we're now part, part way through that uh, three-year program. And where we've got to is basically we're looking at the cause of the fence. So basically you see the spruce that will be dressed and the fences will look basically the same. But it's basically the core of the fence that we're looking to change. Um, and we very much hope to have trial fences uh, in place for our beach meeting. Um, in December before the end of the year so we can trial them and then if that proves to be successful and we get very good feedback from that then obviously we will look to replicate that throughout the Grand National course. The fences themselves from, from a public perspective as I say will look exactly the same, will be the same height, um, will still be dressed in spruce um, so it's purely just the core of the fences that we're changing but we think it's a very positive move. Uh, again we've consulted um, with RSPCA World Horse Welfare uh, on that design uh, and we think we're very close now and as I say we're very hopeful that we can we can trial that at the beach meeting. Are they more or less unlike the sort of regulation fences on the Mildmay course right next door? Um, I mean, that's the sort of um, thing that we, we're looking at a couple of possible possible ways, and, and one of those is, is looking at the more more the mild may type fence. And um, we're also looking at something that, that is a little more, bit more innovative than that, perhaps. But the basic premise is the same: is that the core of the fences will be a lot softer than they currently are. Okay. If we move on to uh, Beecher's Brook, and, and and this is somewhat debated. Um, if you explain what what work has been done to Beecher's Brook, first off. Well, again, we've, for the 2012 race, further to 2011, we did some levelling on the landing side um, to beaches. Um, so what we've done this year, we've had a look at it, and it seems to have settled a little bit. So for, for the race for 2013, we're basically re-levelling again to, to, the, um, to the levels of the 2012 race. Um, so really, in essence, not, not, not a change as such, um, but just from just further work to top up the work that we've done pre-2012. OK, I'll return to the subject of Beecher's Brook, but if we carry yeah. on on the subject of landing areas, um, you'd levelled a number of landing areas around the course and you've extended that to some other fences. Is that due to subsidence similarly to what you've just explained? Yeah, again, again, there's a natural terrain to entry that, um, that, that lends itself to, to sort of the drops that we have around the race course. Um, and we felt that... Um, 2012 showed that um, some of the work that we've done around that um, was very successful. So yeah, we decided to extend that and fences 4, 5 and 13. We've cut out some work during the summer um, and again we think that's a very positive move. OK, again, if we go back to the, the list of things, again, I, I shall return to, to field size, which has remained unchanged, and, and talk, about, first of all, about further investment in irrigation. Uh, one of the, the, the basic things that anyone who follows racing knows is that the faster the ground, the higher the likelihood of some sort of injury. Uh, yes, and, and Aintree has been committed for a number of years now to providing safe, good ground for, for, the, for the Grand National meeting, and that remains in place, and that's always been the case. Um, and this, this investment, if you remember, we also invested 150,000 prior to the 2012 race, and this just further gives, gives us further scope and further ability to be flexible um, through the meeting and approaching the meeting about our watering, and gives us a more extensive and flexible approach to, to the watering that we do, to exactly that, to provide that safe ground for the meeting. And I mean, we should be clear, really, it's because the faster the ground, the, the more ability there are to, is to reach speed, and it's, it's essentially a bit like road speed kills. Absolutely, that's, that, that's very much the point. We want to provide safe ground, um, and obviously, you know, as we've, we've seen, that you know, the, the quicker they go on the, on the faster the ground, then yeah, that does lend itself to speed, and certainly that's something that we don't want to see. And, and as I say, we want to provide ground 
on the good side or even good good to soft in places would be perfect for us. This investment is described as an additional £100,000. How much does that add to the current in the current budget that's set aside to for irrigation? I mean, how, how much of a priority has that been for Andrew in the past? Well, it has been. As I say, before 2012, we invested 150000 So this is a quarter of a million pounds we've spent uh, on the irrigation system um, in, a, in the last 18 months alone. Um, so that hopefully that does demonstrate the commitment that we've got to this. And does that require maintenance? Is that, is that something that has to be continually sort of invested in, if you see what I mean? Yeah, with, with everything with the Grand National Lydia, we, we, we review absolutely everything about the race and the event um, every year. Um, and we do from top to bottom everything to do with the event. And that's um, from the fences um, to the start, as you've seen and as you've already talked about. Um, we study all the fences, the way the fences jumped, and we also study everything about the event from, from the public side as well, from the race car experience side. And we do that from top to bottom. And obviously, you know, we're announcing these changes um, you know, some months after the Grand National has taken place because we've taken time, deliberately taken time, and we've considered everything, and we've, you know, this is the approach that we've taken. But we always do that at Aintree, and we always do that around the Grand National. If we move on to uh, provisions for riderless horses, of course, the Gold Cup winner, Synchronise, uh, was killed when he was riderless. Um, what, uh, what, what changes have you brought about for these? Well, we did actually have catching pen. We introduced a catching pen at the canal turn. Um, which, which was um, post-2009 after the bypassing. You've seen all fences are now uh, capable of being bypassed. We also introduced the catch pen at Canal Turn, and we were able to, to catch a couple of horses as a result of that. So, we had again, we had another close look at that, and obviously, unfortunately, we synchronised last year. Um, it was something that we did look very closely at. We've introduced a new catching pen um, at horse number four, um, which again, you, you know, horses are, are herd animals, you know, they'll follow the pack. But we are trying absolutely everything we can there for horses running loose. You, you know, we do have a couple of areas where hopefully um, we can get them away from the pack and get them from running with the other horses. We've all seen the futility of that, though, haven't we? When, when horses run loose on a race course, it, it, it isn't really quite often very effective, sort of people standing in the way and waving their arms. Yeah, and that's not, not what we want to see, of course. You know, and as I say, you know, horses are herd animals, they'll follow the pack. And yeah, Yes, there's, you know, sometimes there is absolutely nothing you can do about that, and we certainly don't want um, outriders sort of running along trying to grab hold of them and pull them away from the other horses. But, you know, if we do have horses that are running loose, we do want to at least give ourselves the opportunity to be able to catch them and get them away if we possibly can. But we accept that, it's, that that's not a straightforward task. So are you but increasing the number of people who will be trying to do that? Yes, we are. And again, uh, that's something, that, again, prior to 2012, we, we significantly increased the number of people who are out on the Grand National course, um, assistance with the running of the race. Um, and again, our first consideration is safety and trying to get as safe a race as possible. Um, and that, if that involves um, throwing extra manpower at the race, then of course we will do. And yes, that, that, that will do. And again, there's some small investment again around creating the catching pen. Um, but as I say, we are, we are committed to doing that. OK, well, let's now focus on, on the two areas where the RSPCA um, remain concerned. Um, they say that two significant issues have not been addressed sufficiently by these changes. These are the impact of Beaches Brook and the field size, which remains the same. Uh, they say, while the proposed improvement at Beaches by the additional levelling of the adverse slope on the landing zone can only be beneficial, we believe that the remaining many complexities of this fence mean that it continues to pose a serious and unacceptable threat to horse welfare. We will watch carefully the impact of this change at Beaches at the 2013 Grand National. This is the British Horse Racing Authority's last chance to show that this fence can pose a fair and safe challenge to horse and jockey. They, they basically want an end to drop fences. Why didn't you do that? We, again, we, we consulted with the RSPCA and World Horse Welfare, so we have a really good dialogue with them, a uh, very positive dialogue with them. We feel that, um, obviously, unfortunately, last year we had the two accidents that, um, that happened during the race um, and obviously synchronised fell at Beaches, um, but then went on riderless, which is when, unfortunately, he suffered the accident. Uh, and obviously, according to Pete, which, again, you know, that could have happened at any, any other race course. Beaches Brook is obviously um, an iconic fence. It's part of very much of, of Grand National um, folklore and very much part of the race. If you take Beaches Brook out of the Grand National, you take a massive piece of the Grand National away. We, we feel that Beaches um, remains a challenge. You know, there's no doubt that the Grand National is a, is a tough challenge. It, it's, a, it's a very tough test for a racehorse. Um, but, you know, if we are going to be the Grand National, it's going to stand as unique and it's going to stand as a, a really strong challenge. Um, then we feel that, that Beaches Brook... Um, 
remains as it is. You know, there's no evidence. We've looked at all the evidence, um, and it, our view is that we disagree with the RSPCA on this. We, we think it's a tough challenge, of course, um, but we think it's a safe challenge, reasonably safe challenge, and a fair challenge of the, of the racehorse. But again, it's something we are in dialogue with them, uh, and we will, of course, as I've said before, we will, of course, review everything after this year's race. It's pretty much a threat they're issuing there about Breach's book, though, isn't it? Um, again, you know, we've we've talked with them. Um, we've talked with them uh, at length. Uh, and I think we've made some real progress with them. They're very positive about some of the other changes um, they're doing. The ra they're doing to the race. You know, sort of the landings, the watering. You know, they're very supportive of those. Um, and so we are working very closely with. Them. But clearly, they're not going to talk about how supportive they are about all that if something goes wrong. I mean, we saw that played out in April this year when you'd made all of the changes, and that's not what the RSBCA were talking about immediately after the race, was it? Not immediately after, it, but but again, you know, we we review in time. We take considered considered views, uh, Lydia. You know, we, obviously it's, it can be a very emotional time uh, in the immediate aftermath of the Grand National. It does uh, pr provoke a lot of emotion in people. The Grand National is, you know, that's one of the reasons the, of its appeal to people is uh, it is unique. It, it does set the pulse racing. It is a very exciting race. It's a demanding race, and in the immediate aftermath of the Grand National, yes, you know, people can can say emotional things. People can get very emotional about it. We've taken considered view. We've obviously looked very closely at last year's race and what happened at last year's race and we've also taken into account um, all obviously previous races from many years before. How, how is um, more changes after the trial of one year a considered view? Because uh, you've, you've got to bear in mind that um, we, we had a major significant review um, which gave 30 recommendations after the 2011 race. We we basically are always trying to get that balance, and it needs to be a balance, between the greatness of the race and the uniqueness of the race and the safety. And we always have to be, have safety uppermost in our mind. And the race will always evolve. And there's been changes, as I say, over a number of years. These aren't just changes that have come in the last couple of years. And so we're always monitoring any changes that we make. Uh, and some of the evidence that we've gathered has been over a number of years, which is why we've introduced some of the things that we've introduced this year. On the other point that uh, that hasn't been addressed according to the RSPCA, or ha no changes has been been made as a result of examination, that is the field size. And the RSPCA comment, given the number of fallers and failures to complete the course, we do not accept that the field should remain at 40. Clearly, many horses complete the Grand National, that compete at the Grand National, that cannot complete it. Now. Of all the suggestions that were that were banded about immediately after April's race, one of the things that many racing professionals did seem to think might have some sort of effect on um, reducing the capacity for things going wrong was to reduce the field sizes. What exactly was the evidence that you used to assess this? We, we very much took the view that we should consult um, with all the people who are involved in the race and the professionals who are involved in the race. And extensive consultation has gone on with, with the trainers uh, and the jockeys and the professionals within the industry. The very, very much the view that Aintree is, of course, you know, it's a, a, a parts of Aintree are 30 metres wide. It's, it's clearly got great width to it. It's the widest race course in the country. And we feel the width of it and the size of the fences give enough width for there to be 40 runners in the race. The BHA obviously reviewed it. Um, they set the safety factors and they've set the safety factor at 40. We're comfortable with that. But, but I mean, that all sounds very anecdotal to me. What is the actual statistical evidence that was used in order to make this decision? We looked, what we did, we looked at the percentage of fallers when um, races were, were run with less than 40. Uh, and there's a, there a series, sort of 93 to 99, when the average field size was 33. The percentage of fallers was exactly the same. And we mustn't get confused here of, of fallers meaning fatalities and injuries. You know, horses will fall and get up absolutely fine and come home fine. So let's just be, be, be clear about that as well. And so the evidence that we had when the field size was less was the percentage of fallers was exactly the same. So that doesn't suggest that, 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 that the two are linked. So we felt that 40 runners... Um, was fair. The BHA say that that's the safety factor. But again, you know, and as we've said to the RSPCA, and as we'll say again, and we'll continue to say, we will review everything in light of what happens year on year, and we'll discuss and have a look at the historical evidence as well, and we'll make a decision based on that. At this stage, we feel that the 40 horses, um, there's no compelling evidence to us to suggest that we, we, we need to go less than 40 at this stage. Is... It, 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 can racing be confident that Aintree and the British Horse Racing Authority aren't just going to make changes 
every time the Grand National is run, that, that they are not... I mean, the concern is that Aintree and, and the British Horse Racing Authority are reacting to an agenda that is being set by other parts of, of, the, of life, such as the RSPCA and, and people who have that kind of, of role, which get a sort of impetus via the, the popular press once a year, and the sport is meant to react to it. Is, is there not a concern that the race, the, the Grand National, is just dying a slow death by increments? No, not at all, Lydia. But please bear in mind that the entry team here are an extremely passionate team and, and, and they work tirelessly to put on the Grand National. Every time there's an incident at the Grand National, we feel it. You know, we feel the hurt just as much as everyone. Obviously, all the connections have the hurt if anything happens with the Grand National. We very much see the Grand National. It's the, it's the one race of the year, as you say, that, that the public watch. You know, we had 11 million people watch the race last year. We had 155,000 people who turned up to, to attend the Grand National meeting last year. So it is a great sport, it is a great event, and it's the one race for me that touches, touches the nation outside of your traditional race goer. And that's important to us, and we have to bear that very much in mind. But I can assure you that the Aintree team, along with the BHA, are very passionate about the race, are very passionate about what the race stands for, and we very much stand up for the race. We also have to bear in mind that we live in a, a society and a time when safety has to be considered, and we have to also bear that in mind, and we have to make the race as safe as we possibly can, whilst maintaining the tradition and what the Grand National actually stands for. Now, I, okay. I, I grew up as a child, Lydia. This is why I'm in racing. This is why I'm still talking to you now is because of the Grand National. I've grown up with the Grand National, and I can assure you that I am totally passionate and committed to the Grand National for the Grand National standing for what it is, which is the greatest horse race in the world. It's also the reason why I'm in horse racing, why horse racing caught my, my attention. Can you tell me then what... Aintree and the British Horse Racing Authority are going to do to set the agenda, to set the welfare agenda, to, to, to meet the, the critics head on and to talk about how the race itself and what Aintree and the BHA do for the race, to, to, just to, to be on the front foot rather than always on the back foot. Well, I, I, I disagree that we're on, on the back foot, uh, Lydia, and I know people, you know, the, the thing about the Grand Nasty is everyone has an opinion. Everyone wants to have an opinion, you know, and everyone can pass their opinion at whatever time of year they want to. And that's, the, you know, that's, that's just something we have to live with. We have to bear in mind that we are trying to, trying to do a job here where we are trying to put on the world's greatest horse race in a safe environment. We, we have to bear that in mind. That's a responsibility of ours, we, and we have to take that responsibility seriously. And we are not reacting. We, are to, we, we have to consult we have to listen to people which we do we obviously very much have to take that in mind but then as i say we will take a considered review and we will do what we feel is best for the grand national for the sport because let's not let's not forget that it's the grand national is a one race that touches the public you know that is a responsibility for racing as a whole not just for the grand national not just for entry not just for the bha but for the sport as a whole and i can assure you that we take that extremely seriously john thank you very much for joining us and thank you very much for your full responses no problem at all